fitted into the war. And Britain won the war. In the process, the Ottoman Islamic Empire was defeated, was dismembered, and the Holy Land was liberated for the Jews. And so an act of terrorism led to this strategic target being achieved, the liberation of the Holy Land. But now, the United States takes over from Britain as the new ruling state in the world. In the same way that Britain had a mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews, the United States now has that mysterious relationship with the Holy Land and with the Jews. The first country in the world to recognize the state of Israel is the United States of America. Is that by accident? No, not after today's lecture. You'll never think it's by accident. The United States presents, <coughs> excuse me, presents the baby with everything that the baby needs to grow up to become not only a strong man but a superpower. Massive economic aid. Massive military aid. Massive transfer of cutting-edge military technology. Some from the front door, a lot from the back door. And Israel grows and prospers. But, in order to keep this Israel safe, safe, while it's growing, you had to create a new organization called the United Nations Organization. You had to create something called the Security Council who was responsibility, whose responsibility is for international peace and security. And you had to give veto power to the United States in the Security Council. So that every time mankind came together to censure that Jewish state, the United States is there to cast a veto to protect the baby. It happened time and again, time and again, that the United States is protecting Israel. If there was any doubt that the United States has now taken over as the ruling state in the world, 1956 put an end to that. In 1956, Britain, France, and Israel attacked Egypt took over the Suez Canal. The British, the, the American president was Dwight Eisenhower, General Dwight Eisenhower. He ordered Britain and France and Israel to withdraw. <coughs> and they had to withdraw. And the British government fell. So Anthony Eden had to resign. Very clearly, Britain is no longer the ruling state in the world. The United States has taken over. If you felt that the Soviet Union was on par with the United States, that there are two superpowers, that the United States is not the ruling state in the world, then the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, I think, put an end to that. Remember? Sparrow signed the Calypso as they turned them ships in the opposite direction. You were born at that time? Huh? Kennedy is the man for that. The Cuban Missile Crisis and the Soviet Union had to back down when the United States imposed unilaterally a quarantine around the island of Cuba. And so the United States is the new ruling state in the world. And the United States has a mysterious relationship with the state of Israel. Can anyone explain that? <coughs> About two weeks before September the 11th, there was an international conference on racism and racial discrimination in South Africa, in Durban. 
The whole world come, came together combined to pass a resolution, resolution censuring Israel in that world conference in Durban. Israel walked out of that conference. Guess who walked out with Israel? Colin Powell, the Jamaican. Yeah, who is supposed to be representing the black people of the United States of America. The black people of the United States of America invested heavily in that conference. For years they worked for it. And yet the United States of America walked out of the conference in solidarity with Israel. Can you explain? Do you have any means of political analysis, any tools of political analysis which can explain this mysterious relationship between the United States and the State of Israel? No, you cannot. No one can do it. None can explain except a man named Muhammad. What is the explanation? Dajjal has completed a day which is like a year. And he's now in a day which is like a month. Phase two of his mission. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I now come to the most important moment in this talk. I want to share with you my political and spiritual vibration test. And that is that I have come to the conclusion. You know, Lloyd Best taught me a, a local expression. He said, when God wants to kill Bachaki, give him wing to fly. And uh, there is a similar statement like that in the Quran that Allah gives them. Staircases of silver and roofs of silver. They fly high until he brings them down. The United States is flying high now. Because it's about to crash. <coughs> yes. We are located at that moment in time when a day which is like a month is about to end and the day which is like a week is about to commence. When it does occur, it will confirm what I'm saying. When Britain became the ruling state in the world, Britain took control of the money of the world. And the sterling pound was the international currency. Do you remember those days when we used to study? 1 pound 480, 2 pound 960, 3 pound 1440, when you went to school? Huh? Yeah. And then when the United States took over from Britain as the ruling state in the world, the United States could not be the ruling state in the world without taking control of the money of the world. And so the U.S. dollar replaced the sterling pound as the international currency. This took place at the Bretton Woods Conference, the Bretton Woods Accord in upstate New York. And I'm saying to you, if you look at the world of money, you would see the writing is on the wall. that the Bretton Woods Accord is collapsing. It has already collapsed. And a new international monetary system is around the corner in which the U.S. dollar will disappear. And when the U.S. dollar crashes, the American economy will crash with it. Flying high, the Dow Jones flying high. I want to suggest to you that the September 11 attack on America bears an un